Hello and welcome to another episode of Attention Span Labs. I'm your host, Michael A. DiBaggio, and today I'm going to talk about a subject that is outside of my usual purview and that I have no significant expertise on. Or do I? I'm talking about mental illness, or rather, what it means to be psychologically healthy and how you can achieve it. A few years ago, around one-fifth of the adult U.S. population was on prescription psychotropic drugs, alleged to treat depression, anxiety, and more serious mood and behavioral disorders. Many more people are, by their own admission, addicted to some other kind of drug, licit or illicit, and claim that they can't get through the day without it. The U.S. government estimates that 26% of the adult population has a, quote, diagnosable mental disorder, end quote, in a given year, and that 18% and 9.5% of adults will suffer from an anxiety disorder or depressive episode, respectively, in a given year. Suicide is the 10th leading cause of death overall, and the 4th leading cause of death for men ages 18 to 65. Again, this is data from a few years ago, before the evil, dehumanizing, society-destroying lockdowns and public health restrictions of 2020 to 2021. A CDC morbidity and mortality report from August of 2020 reported that 10.7% of respondents seriously considered suicide in the previous 30 days, which was more than double the rate that had seriously considered suicide in all of 2018. Included in that number of suicidal ideations are 25%, a full quarter of all young adults aged 18 to 24. I am not one of those people. I do not take any prescription drugs and have never been diagnosed or sought treatment for any mental issue. Aside from morning coffee and a dram of scotch now and again, I do not consume even legal mood-altering drugs. I have never seriously considered self-murder. Some might say this means I have no relevant experience on this subject and therefore nothing worthwhile to say about it, that I simply cannot know what it is like to have a mental illness. I acknowledge that it's possible these people are right. But I also submit that it is at least as likely that they're wrong, and that they would benefit more from listening to someone who does not have crippling psychological issues than they will from someone who does. And let me pause here and state unequivocally that my intent is not to condescend or demean anyone so suffering from depression, anxiety, drug abuse, or thoughts of suicide. On the contrary, many people close to me have been afflicted by these, and my purpose is to help them in the best way I know how. As far as I am concerned, there are two keys to psychological health and stability, and they are not dispensed in a pharmacy. And no, I'm not talking about exercise, proper nutrition, meditation, spending time with friends, or getting involved in hobbies. These are all very good things and will go a long way to making you feel better. But I want to zero in on is much more basic and essential. Unfortunately, you may not be happy to hear either of them. Let me start with the bitterest pill. First, you must accept that happiness is elusive. It's not something you're entitled to. In fact, happiness is not even going to be the base state of your life. Large parts of your life are going to involve frustration, disappointment, anger, and ennui, if not outright misery. You're going to suffer, and you don't have to like it. If you are very fortunate, your base emotional state is going to be one of contentment, not rapturous exuberance. This principle can be rephrased another way. It's okay to be unhappy because unhappiness is part of the human condition. Accepting this fact has two salutary benefits for mental health. First, it stops you from thinking, something's wrong with me, whenever you have negative emotions. Second, it forces you to treat real moments of happiness as something to be treasured, rather than taken for granted. This is what pop psychologists mean when they tell you to cultivate an attitude of gratitude. You will never be grateful for the joy you receive, much less feel grateful for merely being spared a state of abject misery or destruction if you think happiness is owed to you. This is the great paradox of happiness. The more you expect it, the less it will mean to you, and the more traumatizing periods of grief and suffering will be to you. Happiness becomes something to be lost rather than something to be gained. Instead of looking forward to brighter days ahead, you will constantly be on the lookout for the approaching storm clouds. Do you think you don't have anything to feel grateful about? The very fact that you're watching this video and therefore have electricity, a computer, or a phone says otherwise. Do you have a roof over your head? A full belly? Do you have a bank account with at least $5 in it? 
a set of clean clothes? Be grateful you're not squatting in the dirt under a blazing sun, or raving an icy wind, or languishing in prison, or fleeing a hungry panther. If those examples mean nothing to you because you've never suffered for them, then think of the worst time in your life and be grateful it's not that bad. And if this really is the worst time in your life, well, try to tough it out a bit longer and see if things don't improve with time. You might be having second thoughts about this video now. Hey, this isn't what I signed up for. I was looking for the secret of happiness. Sorry, bucko, but that is the secret of happiness. I never promised you'd be happy all the time, and anyone who does is lying to you. That's the thing about happiness. It doesn't last forever. But if you accept this fact, you will, despite all the slings and arrows of life, basically be happy. I regularly become angry, frustrated, disillusioned, truculent, and plagued with fear, shame, and anxiety. Just ask my wife. But I'm still basically happy. In 2017, my life was at its nadir. My newborn son was in intensive care for almost three months, every day of which I had to work for nine hours trying to make deadlines on an almost impossible project, then drive an hour to see him, spend whatever energy I had left trying to care for him, fight tooth and nail with doctors and insurance companies, and then drive back home again, physically and emotionally exhausted, knowing I was going to have to do it again the next day. And even then I was basically happy, simply because I knew things could be worse, but they weren't. And this brings us to the second key to psychological health. Take responsibility for your life. It's easy to get the impression from that last part that I'm fatalistic, but that impression would be wrong. To be sure, there are lots of things in life that are out of your control. My son being born three months premature was one of them. But there is an awful lot that is in your control, and you had better be able to distinguish the two. Because no one who feels adrift on the wild currents of life has a shot at happiness. Victimhood status is very popular these days. In fact, it grants you a significant social cachet. Beyond that, though, there is a certain sinister emotional appeal to it. Whatever went wrong, it's not your fault. You are not to blame. Someone else is. In a world where happiness is increasingly defined as not being responsible, this would seem like a sure ticket to happiness. Of course, it only takes a cursory look at the people that promote this mentality to see how few of them are happy, or sane, to know that this is wrong. I mean, claiming victimhood is fine, but who really wants to be one? And irresponsibility is essentially victimhood. If you are not responsible, you are helpless against circumstances or another's malicious will. What seems at first to be an easy escape from feelings of failure and guilt is actually a prison of doubt, fear, and despair. The more you claim that your life is out of your control, the more you will believe it is. Tell me, is there a mindset more inimical to psychological stability, to the possibility of happiness, than this? But it gets worse. You see, true helplessness is so psychologically unsupportable, so anti-sanity, that no one can really adhere to the concept. Thus, those who reject responsibility over their own lives seek responsibility over other people, sweeping social problems, or, in an especially absurd and topical example, the weather. A sane person need not be told that these are intractable, if not completely unsolvable problems for even the mass resources of the most competent, wealthy, and powerful people on Earth, much less someone whose own life is in chaos. But these unfortunates have traded the sting of potential embarrassment in relatively small matters for guaranteed humiliation in large ones, and won themselves a bundle of neuroses in the bargain. Worse, they make life harder for everyone else. By not taking care of themselves, they add to the burdens of those more responsible than them, not to mention the unintended consequences of their scolding, empty-headed do-gooderism. A uniquely modern manifestation of this psychosis is called doom-scrolling. The obsession with consuming grim and usually wildly exaggerated news from around the world, most of which would have absolutely no impact on the person if they had never heard about it. Consumed by impossible goals like ending racial animus or stopping the spread of an endemic airborne virus, they refuse to have a friendly chat with their neighbors or to take a jog and a shower, thereby neglecting the only real avenues for positive change that are open to them. 
Internet-related neuroses are so common and destructive that I would be justified in telling you the third secret to happiness is just stay off the Internet. But really, most of the psychological harm caused by the Internet can be diffused simply by accepting responsibility for the things you can control and to stop worrying about the things you can't. So there you have it. The two most essential requirements of mental health. Understanding that you will not always be happy and taking responsibility for your own choices and no one else's. Mastering these attitudes does not guarantee an easy life. There is no such thing. But they will make you tough enough to handle what it throws at you. Thanks for listening, and may God be with you. This is Attention Span Labs, signing off.